Xbox Record This is a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. Hosted by three BFFs, Daddy Diwali, Chipotle Bear, and Bubble Boy N7. This is Cortana. And remember, don't make a girl a promise if you know you can't keep it. As always, Spartans, see you online. You guys ever have like beef stew and then of you course. get a piece stuck in your tooth and mm. you floss it but it feels like yeah. it's still there yep all the time yep oh hello and daddy d wally here and welcome to xbox record this episode 86 joining me as always is the assistant to the co-host i think it's chipotle bear chipotle bear how are you uh, I'm doing great, man. I am uh, a little tired. We're getting ready. We've had a, quite a run of festive activities and got a couple more ahead. Speaking of which, I just want to take a quick moment before I forget to wish our cat commander a happy birthday tomorrow, 24 hours from today. Daddy D. Wally is celebrating his 38th birthday. <sighs> How's it feel, bud? What? I I don't know what he's talking about, you guys. I'm turning 28. Tomorrow, I am not almost forty. That's what he said, wasn't it? I am not nope, middle aged. You know, and you know what I I always tell Shannon you, and Liz okay. th- what you have to do. I think I've said this on here before. I can't remember. You tell people you're fifty eight, Dan, and they'll be like, "Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, yeah," or even forty eight. Yeah. They'll be like, "What is? What's your secret?" It's not like like nobody cares if you're old, but if if they if you say you're add ten, older. Of, forget the forget the minus ten. Nobody believes you. You're right. Sad. Well, I mean. Early thirty, I could I could pass for thirty one. Thirty eight, sad man. I'm I know, you. but thank you guys. I appreciate it. And yes, I am an old boomer now. But I like and you got boys. The perfect Christmas gift. Negative temperatures. <laughs> yeah, that I forgot to say. Yeah, we are recording on the coldest night in thirty two years or something like that um, in Denver. So that's great. That's why you'll see us bundled up. Well, I'm bundled up. I'm in the basement. Bubble boy, you're in a basement, right? I, I'm. I guess. If I was in the other room, I'd be really warm because it's next to the heater. But I'm I'm freezing caca over here with this window right in front of me. But joining us as always, thank you again, Jose and Bubble Boy, as the assistant to the assistant of the co-host, Bubble Boy and Seven. How are you? Oh, great! And I, I hope you all noticed this is the first. I did time notice. I've Hideous. I've <laughs> known Ashley. What? Yeah. yeah. What's the occasion? Yeah. Did you get in trouble? Uh, a little bit, not in trouble, but like sh- I just was growing the beard out significantly, and I realized like I desperately want one. I have it's too thin; it's just not thick enough. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, it, it would genuinely like I my I I have like eight hairs that come out, and so as much as I loved the shape and the look and everything, there just wasn't enough. And and she's like, well, why don't you do something different? And so I came out with just this giant mustache. And she was like, immediately, that needs to go. It's like and something so, else. Yeah, not that. Like, right. Well, joining us is a baby bubble fit, bubble boy over there, baby face bubble boy. Um, and yes, it's going to be freezing. So let's jump right into it tonight, guys. We got a lot of shout outs this week, Jose. I, something must have popped off on our YouTube channel because our last episode has over th- almost 400 views, 10 likes, and we got a lot of new subscribers. So we got to shout out our new subscribers on YouTube. Shout out to John Adams. I looked. It's not the historical ex-president, John. Dead. Dang it. John. I was hoping. Yeah. I was hoping. Uh, it is a black man. So not the complete opposite of old school <laughs> John Adams. And then Victor Emmanuel for the subscription. Dion Hayes and Donnie Skills. Shout out to all of you for subbing to us on YouTube. We really do appreciate it. And we also got a comment on not only not our last video, the one before concerning the Godfather, Todd Father, Todd Howard, and the weight of the world in Starfield in our debate on 60 FPS and John M.2785. I don't know if that's his name on YouTube. It might just be John M., but I noticed they added like the hashtag numbering system like, like Xbox does now. 
He wrote on our previous uh, two episodes ago, he said, I'm not familiar with everyone yet, but the guy on top is right. We shouldn't be making excuses for anything less than 60 FPS. It should be industry standard. All right, John. At this point. I mean... If he says it, I'll take it. When you say it, it's oh, me. Oh, okay. So it, if, if old John M2785 says so, then damn it, I'm on board. Okay. So there you have it. It Every game, we need to have the option. And the person he was referring to on top, that was me. He was saying he agrees with the old Wally on the 60 FPS debate. It needs to be an option. But we can talk about that forever. Uh, many, many for uh, for every episode, we can bring it up. But I did want to shout out everybody. Thank you so much for checking us out on YouTube. I'm going to go check out the analytics because I want to see how many people actually stuck around. Apparently, that one guy, I mean, the the Starfield talk, he he jumped to it. That's why I do those little uh, timestamps. So, the chapters, yeah. yeah. So uh, some people are watching out there, boys. I appreciate it. It's good stuff. Uh, let's jump into what have we been playing or watching? Who would like to go first this week? Because hey, did you manage to play any games this week or... I did get to play a little, but I, I mean, I have a, a little bit to say. So I, uh, the game that I've been playing as much as I can is High on Life, actually. And I admittedly was the one who was like not down on this, but I was definitely the least excited of the three of us when it was announced way back at Summer's Game Fest. And again, could not, I like Rick and Morty. It's nothing that I love Justin Roiland. Like, I just was like, I don't know if I want a game of like that humor consistently with the guns talking. And I'll be honest, I'm actually enjoying it. I think they did a really good job implementing the comment system where it's very funny and it's timely um, and it's also dependent on your play so like if you're bad at shooting you get comments whereas if you're good you get kind of like praise and stuff um, it's cool I will say the first boss was actually pretty hard for me I took me a quite a few tries to beat her um, the second one I just took down and I just got the JB smooth gun Gus um, so I, I mean I like literally no I got it and I had to pause it no spoilers, no, no spoilers but the hard part about playing it, uh, and for this for any parents out there, it is incredibly offensive. Like not not offensive is not the right word. It's in, uh, incredibly inappropriate for kids, and so because of that, since we're all on break, like the time for me to play it is just not very high. Like I don't have more a than, lot of time. More than like the stick of truth, or just similar. Uh, a stick of truth that you could at least walk around the world and like if as long as you weren't interacting or progressing the story, you could still do stuff. This one you absolutely cannot like because you'll hear commentary from things that are just they're hilarious. Like I'm laughing out loud, but they're very inappropriate. And it would be one of those things where your kid asks a question and you, they're like, what's that word mean? And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> you know? I was like, have you um, ever considered gaming with headphones with your children? Or- <laughs> I, I have, but but they – they're, then they just ask me, what's he saying? What's this one doing? And and now that Penelope can read, which is wonderful, I can't even use captions anymore because she can now also read the words. So um, I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, I played a little bit of Nobody Saves the World again today because Scarlet wanted to play it with me, which was really great. Um, and then also I really want to play the Halo Winter Update. I haven't even uploaded it, updated it yet because I just – I liked the Winter Update last year and I'm excited to get that gear again this year. Um, and then also I know I mentioned this last time. We're going to Nashville on the 26th. And so I know I can technically play Halo like – not at home, but that's it's very challenging. So I'm going to try to get as much as I can done in the next couple of days. Um, some gaming. In addition to that, though, just in terms of watching, I've been watching a bunch of South Park. Um, the reason for that is I'm working on a gift for my wife for Christmas, and it just I need something on in the background. And I've I really fell off after like season two, so I've been rewatching everything from season one on HBO. And man, just laughing oh, wow. my head off at a bunch of stuff. Wow. Yeah. So uh, is that's HBO the only too. place you can stream them right now? I don't know. It's the place that was easiest for yeah, me because I have a yeah. subscription, but I'm, I'm sure there are probably a couple other places if you have cable and stuff. So that's what I've been up to, man. That's impressive, Jose. I, I thought I would think to just do the most recent seasons of South Park and work your way back because I feel like those old ones, I don't know how well they've aged. You know, I feel like the writing has got, got really good, like no more recent stuff. Like that's when I jumped in was probably like six, it's, seven It's years hit or ago. miss. I mean, some of the first season was real yeah. rough, but it was also weirdly nostalgic because I remember yeah. watching them see, I didn't when watch we were really young. When I was younger, yeah. so I could see um, that. But it's definitely – there's a pretty steady improvement stream happening. And yeah. it's funny because you also see clearly like historical events that were happening at that time oh, that yeah. were impacting change. the show. Change. Yeah. Change. So, uh, I mean, I that was more recent, sure. the change episode. That, that was, yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. Was it? Oh, my God. Two thousand. That was when Obama got elected. It what? was 2008. Oh, I'm thinking, oh, I'm t- I'm thinking about the one with the the Change. I'm thinking about the one with the bums asking for change. That is that is one. That, is that really? No. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I feel super old. Bubble boy. Actually, I'll jump in here because I can speak a little bit about the Halo update. So I have been playing. I jumped in a little bit last night, Jose, 
And gosh, Halo is just, it's just so good. It's just such a good. It's real crispy. I love it's it. It's such, like, I've, we, I played a little bit of Battlefield before with uh, Macombi and Snelling, and I was getting frustrated again because some people just camp and shred you on that but in halo i always feel you know like i have i have a chance you know even if they're freaks i can have a chance sometimes but it's just so mechanically well made that i was having a blast but here's the thing with the the challenges jose i think there are like 10 levels very cool that i want the santa hat bad i want the the visor the uh candy cane visor bad yeah, the candy cane visor is dope too. it looks really cool but some of the challenges are kind of they kind of suck i'm not gonna lie like they make you use uh, either like the needler or like non-traditional guns. Like if it's, I, I got to go for those needler kills, but um, y- you should be able to do it. So let's hop on tonight, hopefully, or something and we'll, we'll get some more. And then I, I also, I'm done, you guys. I did it again. Every Mass Effect game released on the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One. I have every achievement, every trophy, I got the platinum for Mass Effect 3 last night. And I got to say, as much as I love these games, I can see why if somebody newer to gaming jumped into and be like, ooh, this is a little rough. And it hurts to say that. But at the same time, me and Snelling were, or Snelling, me and Pony were talking about it on our stream the other night. Mass Effect 3 came out over 10 years ago. And that's blowing my mind. Still, I, I was a vanguard on Insanity, the hardest game I played, Chance, by the way, playing Insanity, because you know in the first one you could just beat one three times and it gave you the achievement for the fix. It. I'll get to you in a second, Jose. I had to beat all of these on Insanity, so first one was easy. I was a adept. Second one, Infiltrator. Usually the second one's where I have it the worst. If you're an Infiltrator with the Black Widow, it's it's easy. This one I did Vanguard. I was dying. It was just the little guys who would get pick at me with my shield when my shields were down. That would kill me. But like the banshees and the brutes at the end, oh, slaying those guys. They were easy. And the phantoms, phantoms were a joke. Just a joke. But can't wait to talk to you guys about. Well, I'll, I'll save it for after chance because I'll update you about how my all the deaths went. And then Jose, go ahead. What were you going to say, really quick? Just uh, do do you think that if someone who is new to gaming picked up Andromeda, they would be enough to get them into the series? Like I know, I know it's that's like heresy to say, no, but genuinely, it, it's funny you say that. I it made me appreciate Andromeda's combat even more I and leveling that. like yeah. a lot. Like with Andromeda, there's a jump button, there's the sl- jump and slide. There's so much more movement, and then the powers are really cool and how you can do anything. You're not so limited. Andromeda. I can't wait to when see. When was that the last time this. you played Andromeda? Uh the pandemic, twenty twenty. I played I got the yeah, platinum I, it's it, a horrible I game. Just, horrible story, boring was, characters. <laughs> great the best combat in multiplayer, hands down. I would play that today if you guys wanted to jump into that multiplayer. So but Jose, the story's just so much better, like in the original. No, trilogy. I agree. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it, it's Andromeda is better than the trilogy, but for a new fan. Just if someone's listening and they're like, now they're like, I have having second thoughts about going into it. I could say they could do that for sure. Yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, they wouldn't have really any connection. It's just not connected to the first trilogy. And then the only other thing I wanted to say really quickly is uh, I started Dark Souls, but literally just went to the first bonfire and that was it. I'm doing Dark Souls Remastered. Okay. Um, uh, and then I will oh, yeah. get to Sekiro on after the, High on Life. What are you playing it on? Xbox, of course. Are you serious? Okay. I'm, I'm, oh, that's the other thing I want to say. I'm so done with the PlayStation. After 90 hours of Mass Effect games on that controller, I can't play that thing anymore. I yeah. I can't stand that controller. It, My fingers it hurts. Hurt. It hurts. It hurts the My whole thing. My fingers hurt. Like, anyway, do we have that drop? What else is gonna hurt? Now your back's gonna hurt because you just pulled landscaping duty. <laughs> I'll just quickly update you guys. Uh, the only person who survived all of the games was Zaid, Miranda. Passed away uh, at a, at the base. Tally sacrificed herself. It was pretty epic, and I'm going to do some tweets about this. But yeah, it was pretty bad. You guys, the, the party was boring. It was uh, Joker and uh, what's her face? I can't remember her name. And uh, uh, the the crew that they force you with, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. I mean, if Javik wasn't there, oh my gosh. And uh, but uh, overall. Glad to have completed my Mass Effect saga, but even more That's excited impressive. to not be using that PS5 controller. I, are you chance? Are you in the market for a scuff uh, reflex? 
Uh, I, mean, I, last so. night. I, mean, I mean, if you're considering having those back buttons, let me know. But Bubble Boy, what have you been playing? Yeah. Well, I want for all the people that aren't listening, I want you to see. What do you see right there? What is that? An Bad iPhone. Boy? Oh, my God. Yep, Put it in work in Bloodborne. It got the platinum the already. platinum minutes ago. Minutes. Literally minutes ago. So we finished dinner at about 6.30. And all I had left was to beat the Thumerian Pathetic. Pathopathomarian um, queen, however you say that word. Um, and I had her sitting there and everything. And I was like, Ashley, I gotta, I gotta plat this before I gotta get that platy before the show. And, and I pulled it off, ladies and gentlemen, and it was not easy. Um, How was the platinum was, compared to Elden Ring? Um, easier. It's probably also, easier, I did, I did do the, the ending cheat. So I did the, the save file and then reloaded twice. So I only did, I only beat it. Well, I beat the blast boss. So technically this platinum is erroneous. Oh, on all accounts, get right? Jose, erroneous. You did it. On Here goes did it again. Every Hang on folks. I'll see you in 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, it was, it was significantly easier than Elden Ring in my opinion. But it, like I had said last time, I think having, done everything i did in, in elden ring made me so much better prepared for it um so it and i'll i'll put this maybe in our tldr review but like i was a little disappointed at how much of that game i didn't experience because i tried it without any guides and i i well not famously famously um i did use one guide to get to the the main final boss and that was how do you level up because i was running around with all those blood echoes at the beginning having no idea how to level up but i did the rest on my own and i kept the same two weapons like the entire time i just missed out on so much and it like it was cool but it wasn't probably worth it to be able to say oh i did it all without a guide because i don't know like do either of you care that i did that probably not and it sounds there's, kind there's of there's cool only one person who cares that you use the guy. His name is Matt Snelling. Snelling. He just yeah, thinks he's blasphemy so, to get any for you, kind Snella. of help. Yeah. Snellavad, that was all for you. Um, but it was cool to be able to like I got to the the um what is it, the wet nurse, um essentially all by myself. Like I wasn't doing like I was with Elden Ring. Okay, um, but I just like I said, I missed out on so much. Um overall it was it was wonderful not as good as elden ring i don't think as good as sekiro so different did than you play sekiro dark souls that i'll 3? have to i've played everything but three. Oh, i was gonna say where would you rank it and i think that ains that that he liked that the most so yeah yep. you, you might have to get that next i i think on I'm sale gonna, now on yeah. xbox i know so and that's with the the whole whole edition so um and then still just just slogging my way through pentiment it's so bad i'm on act three the story changes completely i have no idea what's going on i don't care about any of it but i'm too close to the end not to finish it it's just bad oh, i'm sorry to hear that it's weird you know people either love it or hate it so oh we got jose's flickering camera over there jose jose's got, is he's getting teleported out of here so i don't know what's what is going, going on, on right now jose uh screen of death uh, well oh, there he goes all right well hopefully we'll and get him he's back gone. uh while Jose i'm still here i'm working on it out his uh wi-fi uh it is walmart connection over there let's jump into the x box news for the week bubble boy let's jump news team assemble sorry Okay, let, let's just, you know what, I was going to start with our boy Hideo, but let's just jump into the news. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? Well, actually, this is interesting because literally <laughs> is. earlier, we hit this just broke, not Chance, not your story, Microsoft minutes ago submitted their response to the FTC on why Ooh. they should. Uh, oh, do tell. Okay, so we can you can read it, and it's 37 pages long. Uh, read Microsoft's response to the FTC's Activision Blizzard lawsuit. This literally just happened 7.17 Mountain Standard Time. We're recording at 7.46 on December 22nd. The company has filed a 37-page document explaining why it thinks it should be allowed to buy the gaming 
Titan. And along with that chance, I didn't uh, link this um, to you guys, but I, I saw this on my Google feed on CNBC. And again, this is their response, but I wanted to read this quote um, coming from, uh, this is from, is Jose back? Jose, are you back? You good? Yeah. I'm back. Okay. Sorry, guys. Are you looking at the, you said the CNBC article? Yeah. Are you on it too? Do you have it? Yeah. The Microsoft response to FTC case seeking to block Activision. Yeah. How would you pull deal? that up too? I just Googled it. Oh, okay. So everyone had that. <laughs> and it's, uh, I think this is from, what's his name? Brad Smith. Can you check for that for me? Chance this is coming from Jordan Novit. No, I mean the guy from Microsoft who. Oh, couldn't tell you. Who. <laughs> Some guy who made the 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 come com- anyway. I'll come back to that in a second, but I wanted to say the, the the Verge article has very cool graphs. If you scroll down a little bit, you guys, do you see that the pie charts that they show for the percentages? So shares of Sony, Nintendo, and Xbox console units sold in 2021. In 2021, 50 percent of all consoles sold was the Nintendo Switch. Crazy. I would have never thought that. 34% PS PlayStation, 16 Xbox in 2021. And that's with Xbox having a good 2021, apparently. Yeah. That is... I don't see those charts you're talking about, though. On the on the Microsoft... Read Microsoft's response. If you just scroll down on, in the article from On The Verge... Um, and then Sony, Nintendo, Xbox exclusive titles in 2021. And that was Xbox's good year. Uh, 40% Nintendo, 50% PlayStation, 10% Xbox. Xbox share of global 2021 mobile gaming. This is just a joke. 0.3%. All others, 99.7% on mobile. And then the last one, Xbox and Activision Blizzard King shares of the 2021 global, uh, or sorry, mobile gaming revenue. That all of them combined is 4.3 percent. Four percent being ABK. The rest is 96 percent. Uh, and Chance, why don't you share your quote here from this uh, UK and the CMA article, and then Jose will throw it over to you. Yeah, and I thought, of course, this was interesting. That's why I put it on there. But because it's usually so negative, this one coming from Matt Kim over at IGN said 75% of the United Kingdom public comments support Microsoft acquisition of Activision. Um, so that just kind of shows you right there. And I think, Jose, didn't wasn't it you that was saying, like, the UK is really big into PlayStation and stuff um, more so than the Xbox and even they are like, yeah, for the most part, three out of four gamers over there. Are like, yeah, let's do it. It's not going to, let's only do it. Can help us. So <laughs> before I throw it over to you, let me read that quote. So this is coming from Brad Smith. Um, the Microsoft's president and vice chair. And he said, I, I really had this quote. Um, Microsoft, Sorry, the acquisition, and this is the key point, the acquisition of a single game, we're all talking about a single game, by the third place console manufacturer cannot upend a highly competitive industry, Microsoft said in its response. That is particularly so when the manufacturer has made it clear it will not withhold the game. My Xbox, Microsoft has said we are not keeping Call of Duty exclusive so many times. The fact that Xbox's dominant competitor, Sony, has thus far refused to accept Xbox's proposal does not justify blocking a transaction that will benefit consumers. Jose, give us your thoughts on uh, some of these pie charts, Microsoft filing their response. Are we going to see, is this going to be conceded before going to court or is this going all the way, Jose? What do you think right now? I know it's early because this is breaking news, guys. You heard it here first on XRT. <laughs> Literally 30 minutes ago, this started to break on the internet. So go ahead. Uh, so my my gut says that 
I still don't think it's going to go all through. Because remember, too, for those that don't know, this is August. The court date is set in August. We're talking a full, like, nine months from now. Um, I just think I think too much will happen in that time to let it go to court. That's just my personal opinion. Um, you know, in terms of the the, I like Chance's article from IGN from Matt Kim. That was, I think that's an important piece because Chance was correct that when we when this whole thing was going through Activision Blizzard King, the, the UK was kind of the first resistance that Microsoft saw formally from some of these like financial bodies, these decision making bodies that they were concerned about some of the stuff that Jim Ryan was bringing to light about Call of Duty and stuff. Um, and so for for the public in the UK, which is definitely very PlayStation heavy, for them to be like, look, we don't care. Because it's, I think, and this is again, just my opinion, I think Microsoft has very clearly shown so many times that like, look, we're not trying to hold Call of Duty. If you want Call of Duty, cool, here's a 10-year deal. Here, let's put it on your PlayStation Plus. Let's give it to Nintendo Switch. Like, they're not trying to do this. They're trying to do the exact same thing they did with, my, with Minecraft when they bought Minecraft years ago. They just want to, they're going to own it, but they're going to still give it to everybody. Um, I think that's what's really coming out here. And other than that, I don't have a whole lot to add. I mean, obviously, I'm very hopeful it still goes through. I have not had a chance to listen to, um, I wanted to hear Hogue talk about it this week on uh, Season Gaming, because Hogue is actually a lawyer. He's a corporate lawyer. And so he, if there's someone who would actually know about this, he would. Yeah, And, no, and I remember. I was just going to say, yeah, if, if you want to go in depth about this, I'm sure he's going to, if he's not already filming or live streaming his, you know, he goes through, sure, I'm sure he he goes through these, you know, word by word these long documents yeah, and, and it's crazy the article on the verge has all 23 pages of it so yeah you can, you can read it yourself if one. you want but i but i one thing he said a couple of weeks ago when when i was listening to him and ains talk about it was like he goes look i've done this for a long time i see nothing about what microsoft is doing that has any legitimate reason to get this this to go through he goes like, I, there's nothing I see that they're doing wrong. Like they've done everything right. I feel like this is going to get to a judge and a judge is going to be like, so you want this game? And they're like, yeah, we, they're either going to make too much money. And he's like, well, did they offer you the game? And he's like, well, yeah, they gave it to us for 10 years. And you said no. And he's like, so what are we doing here then? Like that's legitimately kind of the the, the brunt of his argument. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I mean, I know that everyone's tired of this, but now that we're kind of rolling and this is happening, like I'm just, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm, I'm curious for sure too. It feels like a, Feels like a few or not a few good men, uh, 12 angry men. That's what it feels like. 12 angry men in the gaming world for sure. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Bubble Boy, any closing thoughts on ABK and this? Do you, do you, well, let's, you know, that 75%, let's go back to that. Yeah. I would think yeah. that's a good, like if I was a consumer, yes, I think this is a good thing. And as a person who owns an Xbox and a PlayStation, it only benefits me to have some of those Activision games on Game Pass, and I yeah. would love to have those games on Game Pass, and I could buy other games on PlayStation. But yeah. do you think that actually means anything to the CMA, with, even with that seventy five percent? Um, maybe not, but I think in the the court of public opinion, it helps a little bit, which can matter. Like that's a lot of times why when you have like not civil cases, but um, criminal cases that you're not supposed to talk about things outside or that happen before the trial. Right. And so they're not supposed to do like public comment and all that kind of stuff. Cause you don't want to bias all the jurors opinions beforehand. Th and this will be a judge, right? Jose, it's not like a panel. I would imagine so because it's not, it's not a, a it's not committee a or anything criminal case. Um, it's a yeah. It's and a, so it, I, I don't know. I think that that might help. I don't know. It can't hurt. And I just thought it was kind of cool. Again, it just it kind of reiterates the fact to me that like there are maybe eight people on the planet that seem to not want this to happen, and they're all the high ups at Sony. Exactly. Um, let's hope. But this is the last time we will talk about it this year. I doubt it. It's over, Anakin. I have, I have the high ground. Let's move on to the next story. Uh, let's. Well, our boss is checking on it on the internet. He's just saying crazy stuff. I love it. Guys, Hideo Kojima says Microsoft understood his unusual game when others thought he was mad. And this is coming from, coming from Tom Ivan over at Video Games Chronicle. I just got to read some quotes from our man, Hideo Kojima. I tend to get easily bored, he said. Part of why I've been able to make games for 30 years is because of new technology replaces the old so quickly. The tech you use today may not be applicable tomorrow, and I'm interested in figuring out ways to incorporate the new. Making the wrong choice can result in failure, of course. It's a bit like a space program in that way. 
The project we're working on with Microsoft is one I've been thinking about for five or six years already. The project required infrastructure that was never needed before, so I discussed it with lots of different big companies and gave presentations, but they really seemed to think that I was mad. It was ultimately Microsoft who showed that they understood, and now we're working together on the project, including the technology front. Guys, what is Hideo Kojima up to? I really want to... What do you think this new game can be? It's it's, uh, it's a video game slash baking show competition. <laughs> For real. Before I go back to my boy, Jose, do, it's got to be something where you maybe watch and it's got to have mass like infl- like appeal. Not appeal. What's the word? Uh, uh, um accessibility like yeah, accessibility I playing, like and we're all participate. three playing the same game exactly like it like, even though it's a single player game or something something where we're all like getting on our phones and like there's a social media app tied to yep. it or something with with I was, strands connecting us i really was thinking about that remember how the old was it battlefield 4 where you could play oh, from your yeah. ipad and you were just Good like pull. The, the you know the other person the overhead the, guy yeah what was overhead, that yeah, yeah for uh, overwatch um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah overwatch <sighs> um but something like that, I, I think what it's going to be is it's not as far out there as he's making it sound. Like, I think once we all what if it have is? it finally, re- well, what if you, what if you're not Kojima, even playing so. with a controller? What if it literally is, is like some sort of interactive, I don't know, Jose, what do you think? I just don't think, I think that's kind of been done in other ways. Like some of those full motion video games. Yeah, but- um, I, I guess I don't, I don't know. know. And then think about uh, what was it? Uh, as dusk falls, when you were streaming, you could have people mm-hmm. vote on, and they yeah. they would override that, which was kind of cool. But Jose, what about things you? like that? I you know honestly, I don't know. I mean, the the rest of this article from VGC, just for those that are listening, <laughs> talks about how that the, he thinks the the writer thinks that it's based off of. Um, there was some leaked footage last month on a game supposedly called Overdose. That's a horror game. That's supposedly what Kojima was working on, and um, and actually they they go on to say that that there was the video clip that came out. I guess it was linked to this article at one point. They've actually been asked to take it down, right, by Kojima Productions, which like gives credence that that could in fact be what's going on here. Um, in terms of what it could be, I don't know. I mean, I was trying to. I agree with you. It does sound like what he's trying to do is trying to harness like the the power of the mobile market and people on their phones and playing a game but it's still a console game because it's being done with microsoft and so finding that balance because of the but is like, it the a horsepower game? of game game pass streaming game pass everywhere on your phone well i mean i think but think about this Ko- kojima's games even the original metal gears are so beautiful and like there's so much data in the game they're big games that it, it doesn't make sense that it wouldn't also be console totally because yeah. the horsepower of a phone is not even any it's just nowhere near a console right now you know what i'm saying and so it's going to be some because he talked about infrastructure it seems like it's some collaboration i would it made me think of in a weird way pokemon go and I, I know that's very different i understand that but like pokemon go is designed to be this like everybody can play it in public everybody can pick it up on day one and have a great time with it and suck you in and the power players will like really get into it and they'll spend hours and hours and hours and then there have even been a couple of times where like if you do stuff in pokemon go it affects if you have like like for example there's a pokemon in scarlet and violet that you can actually evolve if you play on pokemon go and you found him when there was like a special event and that kind of stuff it's like in that same realm um and it's just it does require a ton of infrastructure and it's and it's a zany idea i mean that's that's i think the piece of this that's so important for people to understand is like even kojima knew that this is like a for for a huge name in the industry arguably like top 5 in the industry for him to go to a company and be like i have this idea and they're like we're going to pass are you i mean talking that's, about you crazy that's SLB. significant man so we'll see man i mean if it's a horror game i mean that piques my interest i just don't know what that looks like on a mass scale you know and maybe that's what he's talking about something that's never been done because there has never been like the closest thing is um what's the asymmetrical game that everyone plays um dead by daylight dead by daylight no that's no, probably no. the Friday closest the 13th. thing 
Yes, well, <laughs> but if by everyone you mean just, just pony, <laughs> the same. eight people on the same server. Um, uh, oh. No, I I'm actually legitimately thinking it might have something to do, and and you'll see in that article that you linked there if you scroll down a little bit further about his upcoming movie that he finally gets mm. to make. I wonder if it has something to do with like a video game at the movie. Oh well, no, but isn't the movie idea. Death Stranding? It is. It is. And of, well, of then course, it couldn't be tied um, to that because that's a Sony. Well, actually, I think he bought. There were rumors no, so saying not that saying... he bought the IP from Sony. So, like, he, like, we might get Death Stranding not, on PC. I'm not saying this Death Stranding movie is going to be the thing. I'm saying he's obviously finally realizing his dream of making movies. I'm wondering if it's like you bring your phone to the movie theater or you even bring your PlayStation controller or your Xbox controller to the movie theater. Um, something like that that's more social as well. Um, That'd be interesting, man. Like a, almost just, like a cahoot at the movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something, something like that. And I just, God, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in one of those board meetings because I'd have been that guy. Like, I don't care how crazy this man is. He came up with Psycho Mantis <laughs> boss battle, and yeah, let's that was let back him. In 19- doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How how do you think that went over in the very first pitch meeting when he was this like, "Here's is awesome. what we're gonna do. That's You're, cool." Do you th- I guarantee you, there were some people like, "Oh no, you he play was an video unknown games dude. He, he no on one knew couch. Who he was. Like, no, nobody's going to want to get up off the gear. couch." Didn't he, have, mm. he wasn't he part of that? Not before. Yeah, that was in Nintendo. Oh, I guess NES? you're right. That wasn't the first Metal Gear. Uh, um, but I want to say that's just, a good point, though. That Jose brought up is like that is crazy that he went to lots of people, and Microsoft was like, "We get it." We, I mean, they're yeah. probably not even like, "We get it." We're just like, "Dude, we got to get. We just got to get him." Exactly. We don't care. That's the other part of it, right? Like, I don't, I don't even want to know what you're doing. Yeah. Just go do it. Here's some barrels of money, and who? What do you need? You need AMC to jump on. Great, we'll get the movie theaters. You need <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings to jump on too. Great, we'll get Buffalo Wild Wings, AMC, and Microsoft all in bed together that nobody would have figured before. I mean, here we go. I hate to give him is credit. The, I'm, a, I'm a little excited of it because this is going to be wacky, no matter what, and not not in a Death Stranding kind of wacky way. Well, and I I just love it because look at that picture on the from the VGC that you sent. Like, like I guarantee you, that's how he spent the entire meeting too. He's like, guys, I can't even look you in the face fully for this because <laughs> I know you're going to laugh at me, but I. I, I just need to see this through to well, fruition. Well, I think so. this was the same Good for Microsoft. Same interview with uh, Jeff Keeley, and I guess they were talking about how he was talking about he's he's going to be a VI in the future. He's not going to die. He's going to live on as a VI. Oh, if you guys, you guys should read it. It's pretty good stuff. Guaranteed. So thank you. Give you trauma. He'll be one of those heads. Hideo Kojima for everything and for paying for our podcast and supporting us. And uh, I hope we're making you proud. We can't wait to play your banger slanger for Xbox. So uh, let's move on to the next story. Bubble Boy, take it away with TMNT. I know nothing about this. I didn't read, want to read this because I'm hoping you're going to tell me some real good news with this update. Let's hear Oh, it. Oh, are you hoping? Well, over from Ryan Dinsdale on uh, I IGN, he says, blah, 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 blah. Increased online functionality is the headlining future of the uh, feature of the update with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo getting full multiplayer. Konami also announced that TMNT 3, the Manhattan Project, will be getting an online mode in a future update. Daniel, it's everything you've ever oh, wanted. Am I going to have to buy Sweet. this now for 30? I was trying to wait for 20. But am I going to have to get this? They're giving me what I want. Co-op on. Sounds like your kids need to buy you an early birthday present. <laughs> you got that right. On Turtles in Time. That's exciting. But it's not every game. Is there a reason why we can't just get every game co-op? Well, so, I mean, the full patch notes are down there. It's Yeah, I, I don't understand why um, everyone, but I, I don't know. Okay, let me ask you that. PS4 is, is, arcade controller is now supported. Thank God. Is this enough for you guys to, to buy the game? Let me just hear. Jose already has it, right? I have the I game. Thought, yeah. Have you played it? I tr- I booted it up when I first got it, and then I learned that you couldn't do the multiplayer on Turtles Four, and I was like, I'm just gonna wait because I had plenty to play. Yep, and yep. very to be fair, my mom out of fire really so. it was a great gift. Uh, so I'm I'm hoping to jump in soon because I'm I'm really psyched to go back and play all these games with the features. I Heck just yeah. wanted to do some multiplayer in Turtles Four first to kick it off. So now that that's here, it sounds like yeah, it's time to jump in. It's Cowabunga! It's tempting. Oh, I wasn't planning, but maybe this is what I need before I play. <laughs> Dark Souls, because I really haven't played much, but uh, 
are, are we good to move on or uh, chance are you gonna buy it, yeah, or that are you gonna it. Wait? i mean i'm sure there are other like i said there are other cool things there but like i, I don't care i just turtles in time has multiplayer now yeah i'll <laughs> see if maybe i should get it for pony for like chris well i give him a tv an old lg 1080p tv i don't know if he needs this but if i got it for him he'd probably play with me so tempted me bubble boy let's get to the next story on high on life speaking of high on life like we did earlier so again, coming from IGN, um, High on Life is Xbox Game Pass's biggest third-party launch ever. Um, Justin Roiland's game about talking guns is off to a strong start, and that's coming from Adam Bankhurst. Um, I didn't want to talk a ton about like what the article was other than the headline. I just think it's really cool. I'm excited that this is happening. I think it goes to show even someone like our resident, not skeptic Jose, right? But like you were like, meh, I'm going to probably wait, um, that you're even enjoying. He's it. played it before both of us, right? Have you played it before? Yeah. No, I I downloaded it. Yeah, like I have it. Day yeah, I have it downloaded. You could download it. Um, and Cordy Morgs has been texting me all about it, but I haven't played it yet. Uh, I will say about it just a couple things. No, spoiler free, of course. Um, it plays differently than I thought it would. I mean, it's a first person shooter, which is great, but it feels very much like doom mm. in in the controls. Like it doesn't feel like Halo. It doesn't feel like Modern Warfare. It feels like Doom, which was a, it was Doom. just kind of weird at first, but it but it, it plays really well in that in that world. Uh there's a little bit of Metroidvania stuff in it. Yeah, like I there's some that. stuff that you clearly can't get to first, but I don't know how crucial it is. And I'll be honest, like replayability is still a little bit questionable for me. Like i I don't think I'm that far into the game to be fair, but like when I get to the end, I don't know if I will go back and play just because there's other stuff I want to play. That being said, um, everybody's loving it. You're absolutely right. And I'll be honest that part of the reason why I did decide to pick it up was like a FOMO thing. Like I was like, yeah, I know if this is just killing it with the audience over like, Minecraft over all yeah. like FIFA, like other sports game, EA yeah. games, other well, and, game pass games. And there actually the was one really one. cool quote from it. So, um, from Mike Fridley, he says, this was our first time launching a game with game pass. He's the studio director of, um, and the chief operating officer of Squanch games. And we've been blown away by the response from the players who have made us the most popular game on Game Pass right now. When Squanch Games was first created, it was to make the games we wanted to play. Mm. And Game Pass is helping us reach the players that want to play those games too. Nice. And I just thought that was such a perfect quote from like the per the kind of person you that play matters. to win the game. You play to win the game. Um, it was just perfect. Like I think any other developer out there might be reading something like this and like, hey, maybe we should give Game Pass a try. Maybe this yeah. is something that we ought to look into. I, yeah, and I this don't... exposure, like that's crazy. Well, yeah, that was the last thing I was gonna say. I don't want to have to bring it back to all the Activision Blizzard stuff, but maybe that's a quote that this judge or whoever looks at, like it's this what microsoft is doing overall is very much valued by the entire video game community even those that aren't tied to microsoft and so um i just think it's a big win and exciting stuff all around yeah no it's super exciting go ahead Jose. no i was just gonna say two other two it is and, and, it, and it is fun and i couldn't as i was playing and i couldn't figure out like what it hearkened me back to something. It was like, I, I feel like I've played a game like this, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And then I saw a tweet and I apologize. I can't remember who tweeted it, but they actually tweeted it at Squanch games on Twitter. And they were saying your next game needs to be conquer. Like if you remember conquers bad fur day on the 64 and yeah, then they did, yeah. they did the sequel. It, it's very much in that same vein of like inappropriate, but definitely very fun. And, and just makes you laugh out loud kind of thing. And that that is what it does. The other thing that I thought was just really cool, like they clearly had a lot of fun as they were making it as well, is just um, some of the achievements. And I haven't even looked at the full list, but I saw one that, that I mean, it's a tiny spoiler, but it's not going to kill you or anything. Is that there are four movies you can watch in the game, like full length feature films that are actually exist in the game and you can stop and watch them. And there's an achievement for watching one all the way to the end. And so... No way. So, so I, I, uh, one of them popped up in the game. I'm not going to tell you where. And it's a movie. I can't, it was called like I was a teenage dinosaur. It stars Paul Walker and Denise Richards when they were like very what? young. And I was like, I've never even heard of this movie. And so I started watching it. And to be fair, like 
I watched about 20 minutes and I was like, I don't understand why I never, ever heard about this movie because it's terrible. Um, but I, w- I wanted that achievement. And so my plan was actually to like just leave my Xbox on and just go to bed and like let it, you know, do its thing. But they actually did it smartly where you only can watch like 20 minutes at a time and then it actually will like stop. So it encourages you to keep playing. So just a, a pro tip out there if you're playing the game and you want that achievement, it is a commitment, but it's not the hour and a half commitment that you think it's yeah, going to be. That's good just, to know. Just to know. Yeah. So otherwise I'm having, a, I'm having a great time, man. It's definitely really funny. It's the mechanics are cool. Um, it's definitely bizarre in the same like realm of Rick and Morty where like just weird stuff is happening, but it's not bad or anything like that. So definitely check it out if you're on the fence chance. Do you think I could play it on the backbone or is there too much going on? Like, I don't know. So, so here's the thing. So, so kind of a tiny spoiler for my girls have gone to bed at this point. So I am getting a razor Kishi V2 for Christmas and that's really well timed because we're going to Nashville. Like I want to take my phone and be able to play some of these stuff. So I, I haven't had a chance to test it cause it's wrapped. Um, but I, I am hoping yes. I mean, it's, it doesn't, it's a beautiful game and it does, it did a good job making it look good, but nothing about it screams like overwhelming hardware wise. Yeah. I saw so it might just be dependent on your internet connection, but I'm hopeful that, yeah, you probably could play on your backbone. Cool. Like visually it would work really well. It's just, it's whether it can run. Chance, do you ever stream from your box to your phone at your house or are you just streaming internet? No, just you should, cloud streaming. You should, you should try it because I've done it with Friday the 13th and I'm like, this is pretty good. Like I, I don't really? notice a lag. You might want to try just turn on your box and just remote play from it. That might yeah. be a, an even Instead better. Instead of the cloud correct. streaming? Correct. Interesting. you're all connected just, to your Wi-Fi right away. Like you're right there. So yeah. Try My that. assumption is that, that j- it's another hop that it has to make. No, I'm, I'm thinking it's a less of a hop, right, Jose? Because you're just you're just dialing into your Xbox. It's it's It could go both ways. I don't know the answer. I think to be you fair. should. Tell the, the, the report difference back. is I that when you have a better I'll connection. I'll try it for sure. Yeah, I, I would have you try. I have some thoughts, but I don't actually know and I don't want to lie. So you should try and let us know. <laughs> All right, uh, let's jump into, let's the end of the news for this week, guys. Let's jump into our top five list, mixing it up here. Bubble Boy, take it away. Yep. Um, As Cora and the girls were making tons of Christmas cookies today, I had this like, ding, how can we have, or have we ever done cookies? And um, we haven't. And so we're going to start with like kind of homemade cookie flavors. So we're not talking Oreos. We're not talking Chips Ahoy. That'll be for another banger slanger show that I'm sure we're going to need Goose and J-Biz's input for. But um, this week is just the top five flavors of cookies. Uh, who wants to start here? I, have I guess I'll I have, start. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> um, so for honorable mention for me, and this was a hard one for me to put as honorable mention, but I went sugar cookies with frosting. And the reason is because they can get so hard so fast. Right? And <gasps> That's what she said. And uh, it's just, it kind of, sp- I don't know. I don't like a hard cookie really typically. So um, if you can get them while they're still soft, amazing. But that's why they make honorable mention. Um, number five, oatmeal raisin. I know a lot of people that think oatmeal raisin cookie is It's blasphemous. a very divisive one for some I know, reason. And I don't understand it. I think they're delicious. I love oatmeal. I yeah, don't spoiler love alert. Raisins, I love it too. They're, I know they're great. I, so write in if you think I'm wrong. Um, number four, the classic chocolate chip. And again, I, I, this one had to be number four just because they're not, I know, I know they're not always great. I think people can kind of half ass them sometimes and they, they gotta be warm is the other thing. A warm chocolate chip cookie has to be, um, number three is the scotchy. So if you don't know what a scotchy is, it's like, it's a little bit of oatmeal, but also butterscotch chips instead of chocolate chips. So, um, the cookie company over in Southlands makes those and they're delicious. Number two, I think this one counts is the crumble stuffed Oreo cookie. So if you don't know what crumble is, they're the like huge fat thick cookies that you can get. They have like independently owned pink stores box. all over the place. Yes. in the big pink box, it's a, it's not a normal one. Every once in a while they come around with the giant Oreo stuffed cookie. And what it is, the two patties of the cookie are chocolate chip cookie with crunched up oreos mixed all in it and then the middle is just nothing but frosting and it's like 
like the same kind of frosting on red velvet cake. I think it's like a sour cream frosting. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's the most wonderful cookie I've ever had. The only reason it doesn't come in at number one is because you can't eat more than like three bites of it without feeling like you're just going to like pass out. I thought these were like homemade cookies. We're, that we're, is, we're going out to fancy a home. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. a little bit of yeah. breaking the rules. Yeah. Breaking, yeah. I, I talk about wasn't sure if it counted. Of rules here. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Number one snickerdoodle. Uh, good choice. Okay. I'll, I'll go next. Just to, I'll go, go ahead. Well, I, that's fine. But a quick funny story just to make you laugh as, as parents. So one of the times my kids went to my parents' house and and like most grandparents, like let them have snacks and treats, even, even sometimes more than we would prefer. I don't know. I can't remember what they were eating, but – Scarlet ate so much of it and it was so sugary that like at one point she went to take a bite and she like like shivered and like handed it back to my dad and said, Oh go, you gotta take this. I can't have it anymore. Like she was just overloaded on sugar and, and had had enough. It made me think of that Oreo cookie because that would yeah. definitely do it to her. Anyway, it's, that could have been the one. Dan, go ahead. Uh, okay. So having worked at Subway for many years and being a sandwich artist, also a cookie artist as well. Lucky. Uh, <laughs> I instantly thought back. I'm like, man, it's got to be you know the basic flavors, not these crazy ones that Chance are bringing up. It's got to be something you can get at Subway or like Costco, right, Jose? So it, the, here are my top five. Number five, I was I'm not like obsessed with with it as much as everybody was at Subway, the macadamia. But every time I have it, man, that is a the banger slanger cookie. Right? Allergic like, to this? Yeah. Well, Grayson's allergic. I think to pecans. I think I've narrowed it down to that, but. Uh, number four, sh- I like what Chance said, sugar co- cookie, but with frosting without, uh, I, I don't need it, but delicious. And Chance is right. They do need to be uh, of the soft, chewy variant there. Number three, Chance didn't even have this on here, peanut butter. I mean, a good, chewy peanut butter cookie is delicious. Are you insane? I, uh, I, don't I, you insane? I love everything I else like peanut butter. Crazy, uh, uh, number two. Ball drop. <laughs> I have this way higher. Dude, a soft Oreo oatmeal raisin cookie is fresh. They're, they are delicious. All these haters out there are crazy. Only problem is I'll eat too many of them, and then I'll have horrible stomach cramps from those dang raisins. Remember when I ate all those Hashtag chewy <laughs> raisin uh, – oh, my God, the raisin chewy bars? Oh, horrible at oh. work. And then, of course, heinous gas. Somebody always walks in right after I just rip the worst gas ever. It consistently always happens. And number one. There is nothing topping a just warm, fresh, chewy uh, chocolate chip cookie. That's number one. And it's number one for a reason. I'm not even a big chocolate guy, but when that dough, the perfect cookie dough mixes with the chocolate chip, it's easily number one. Jose, let's hear your list. So I'm going to, I'm, I don't know. I can't tell if I'm going to get shamed for this one, but we'll see. Anyway, or honorable mention for me, number one is shortbread cookies, which I know if you don't know what that is, I'm talking about. Are it's like the, the tree the foils. Tins? No, it's the oh, I like those two. Those are Danish cookies, the butter oh, cookies. Uh, no, the, mm, the butter cookies. Yeah, okay, the trefoils are you know the Girl Scout trefoils or trefoils. That's a shortbread cookie where it's just like the plain cookie crunch. Oh, yeah, I, like I like those, those too. I like right? those. That's and like I, a sugar and, and cookie, I never, right? It's just the hard version. Uh, no, it's technically different. It's it's got a lot more butter actually, but I just I would never think to get them. But man, when I have them, I'm like man, these are good, and I can eat a lot of them. I also put ginger snaps on my honorable mention. I do like mm. a good ginger snap every once in a while. But my official number five, none of you had this one, a wafer cookie. There are those ones that are like in the sticks at the store, and you can get them in like pink, oh, orange. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I like those black. Yeah. Um, number four for me, Snickerdoodle, classic one, really good. But I've also had some that were not that good. They use like too much cinnamon, yeah. or they're like I don't think they I like fall apart. With those very much. That's why I wasn't up on my list. I like them though. Yeah. Number three, and this is with chance, the sugar cookie with the royal frosting, right? So that classic, like shiny frosting on top, and you try to make really pretty designs and it looks all crappy, right? Because you just like who does that? Can't really as stores do. Delicious though. And I I don't mind if they actually get hard. I like I like any kind of cookie. Number two, oatmeal raisin, because I I love Um, oatmeal raisin. And if people hate them, I'm like, cool, more for me. Pass them over here. I'll eat all the oatmeal raisins because I think they're delightful. And my number one is the peanut butter cookie. Like I really, and I went back and oh. forth for a little bit on those two, but I love peanut butter cookies, dude. And then like, I like the, when you take the cookie and you put the Reese's cup in it and they like fold it up and it's like a little appetizer in the holiday party. You know what oh, I'm wow. talking about? I love those yeah, kind of things. Allie, so peanut Allie, butter cookie. Allie makes those. I should have had her make you some of those. I, the, yeah, I know which, exactly what you're talking about. You're talking yeah. about delightful. The one thing I didn't have on my list was the chocolate, chocolate chip. chip. You're insane. I I, and I, it's not like I hate it. I'd like it. It just didn't make my top five, man. I don't know. I was I don't know. saying boo. 
Well, there you have it. The XRT definitive lists of lists of the top five. How how would we word this? Top five just uh, cookies, cookie flavored, cookie flavors, homemade, cookie uh, flavors. homemade cookie cookies? flavors. Maybe that's what we'll yeah. go with. Please send us your list. I can't wait to hear this because. And by the way, this is another one. If you don't like cookies, you're a liar. Go ahead, bubble boy. Yeah, and then is the so when we maybe next week we can do like store bought cookies, boxed cookies. Does do Girl Scout cookies go into that one? No, yes. I think you can. Okay. You should just have Girl Scout be its own category like you I know, don't know. yeah, yeah. Okay. that's fair okay. that's fair yeah. i like that yeah we can do that even though they're overly priced and i'd rather get the what's the <laughs> coconut dreams from samoas yell fudge those are hand, the, screw the samoas <laughs> guys what are we going to close All with here are we going to do what did there? you want to do, do gift presents. presents um my presents for you are still coming but uh, do we do, <laughs> Do I have chances here from you, Jose? Did you give it to Jose? Yeah, I gave you both of them. Yeah. Oh, the baggage gosh. chances well, and the box. Mine well. will be here next week for you guys. No worries. Oh, it's fine. All right. Let's. So, what are you? What are we doing? Well, I have to explain mine quite a bit. So, why, I, why don't you start? Here's the, the one in the bag. Is this is the bag. Yes. Is this going to be merch start, like, that needs to be rebranded? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How did you guess? Um, I wish I had had more time to wrap them, um, and I just failed miserably. I was like thinking I had a whole nother week on my hand. I know. Yeah, it's bad. Ashley was furious. She's like, "You're not gonna that like they know that's not for me, right?" And I was like, of they <laughs> "I know hate that." Like, I was the same way. I'm like, "Who cares?" Gosh, just put yeah. a freaking uh, just whatever. Um, so there were like twelve different excuses I have for why it's not all great and. Um, about a thousand emails back and forth with the company who I will not even share their name on here because I was so dissatisfied <laughs> with their product. Um, but go ahead and, and right, I, there should be one that's like small. There's like a small one that has some thin stuff inside of it. If you will, so put um, this stuff to the side. <laughs> there's, I think maybe, Oh, Oh, okay. That Jose has Is one of them. It? Maybe. <laughs> Is, uh, well, this got some uh, XRT stickers. Both XRT their top, top gun so stickers. Okay. That, no, actually, that that was the one I was like, "Are you kidding me?" There's a These lot of are extra not, space there, though, but that's exactly what I said. I was like, "I how how?" Like, well, it's rectangular. I was like, "You could still do rectangles and make it like." You know, if it was diagonal on there or something, I so just, these are pretty legit. These patches. Yes. So well, the patches where, where are probably the most setting story so oh my gosh we so, got speaking of hideo foxhound right there i think one of my cousins yep. has this tattoo by the way foxhound That's from uh, what is the right? special forces group we also have yep. Rac oh jose of course raccoon city of stars that one's for special Chico. tactics and rescue Re res Re I forget. <laughs> somebody looked that up and of course the crown jewel and seven Ooh, alliance I just got space one or special force Heck yeah. training program and seven with the Alliance symbol in the Those background. Are sick, dude. There's, there should be one other. Oh yeah. This and one. Yeah. This apparently I'm in here. the military here. Daddy. Ooh, uh, um, and that one actually peels off. If you have to go to the airport and you don't want people to know that, you know, <laughs> so like, that's not this, those were supposed to have been sewed on to the sleeves <laughs> of the other part. Okay. Um, so I can open I, up this gray thing. Yes, I found out that I sewing is very hard. Um, and sad news for the Siegel family: my my mom's horse Josie passed away over this this last oh, week. Sorry, and, Josie. Really. Yeah, um, but, and she was going to have sewed all those on for you guys, and so oh, well, I had this like okay. last minute, well, like, oh my like god, what do I right? do? The plans going for. Well, and I was, yeah, and I was kind of like, well, they can save them and put them on something else. I thought there was supposed to be like military themed though, because it was the Top Gun thing. And then clearly you can see the logo was placed in the wrong spot. This logo? And like, I mean, it's too high, I thought. And then it's like really? faded almost. I thought so. I don't know. But <laughs> I think I was just upset with the stickers. And then the next thing that oh, I actually i think maybe turned out thank good. you Bobo. i will um, make you use can, of the patches the other two and... <laughs> okay yep, this is your own uh... clearly wrapped by chance it's just a it's one sticky. piece of tissue paper completely wrapped for one oh <laughs> for the... yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 
That was that was the the one that me and uh, the old customer service rep from this company <laughs> got some had some words. About, it is but... the XRT Top Gun logo. Mm-hmm. Again, Dude, you did too much. This is awesome. Yeah, this like, is no, way too much. And, and there's the still only more, guys. There's still is more. Because from some behind the scenes stuff, if you don't know, I contribute by far the least amount to the actual production of the show. So I just had to really no, well, share you, my you things. A lot of the with... new stuff, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For, this is awesome, though. Thank you, truly. <laughs> yeah. And Daniel, I don't know, do you even wear hats? I don't know. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. I like it. Sorry, I'm giving a lot of uh, ASMR over here. Yeah, so yeah. No, no, no. The hat that's on. the only thing. Gosh, that's I, the only I look one so good with a hat, you guys. And I don't wear hats very <laughs> often. I got to say, I look pretty well, good. Asian new show hat right there. Oh, these are dope too. Look at that thing. So it's yep. a steel pint glass with the XR. That's dope, bud. So the, wait, wait, these, are, these are just single stickers. See, I thought uh, the chance yeah. that this was like a legal yeah. pad to like write notes on. Because you're like, why in God's name would a company make this sticker with all this stuff? Yeah, exactly. on it. <laughs> and what's funny, like, well, Cora, so I'm just... assuming Cora wrapped one of these on her own. Is that the one that was wrapped single? There was one just wrapped by itself. Was it really? <laughs> Maybe she must have, yeah. You you might have one more than Jose then. <laughs> those are sick, dude. I love it. Those cups are badass, yeah. I was I was pretty impressed with those cups. I just again, I was like this is so much smaller than the image that what I thought it was supposed to look like and I, I love know, it, I but think thank that's you, just, man. That's how that goes. But we're going to the movie tomorrow yeah. for Penelope's birthday. You know me rocking all this. She'll be like, Dad, you got a cool Here's my XRT yeah. Top Gun hat. Very cool. Yep. And it's, so. it's good for kids, too. Good size for them. So that's perfect. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. yeah. So I like that's the just color. I like the white with the black and the green. This, this, and I like the hat. It it pops for yeah. sure. Like the timing. Sure. So maybe we won't. We'll have to delay the old. <laughs> No, it's no, fine. I, it doesn't matter because because either. Well, we'll talk about that offline, but either way, I it's it's super fun and cool. So that's just my thank way you, of dude. saying thanks. Truly I know thank, you guys thank you. Yeah. Put in hours and hours and hours. Um, Wear this hat to, to make this show happen. That These I patches are super cool. Oh boy. Like I'm really. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Why? You, and I guess it it's it good. Turned out. Yeah. Cool. So you have that, to. Um, oh, I see. You have to. You have to sew. The back part. This on. part. On, Correct, and, and it's just the your nameplate and the Fox Sound one. You do the back part. The other, well, you know the what? Two you know, I'm good to come that way. But my jacket, whenever that Halo jacket comes in, plays, I cannot Ooh, yeah. wait. So that's where the idea came from, um, of course, and that's and it dude. turned into twelve different. Did they have things these like available? The, the... Um, Amazon. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, they, these, these, these are iron on ones, but you should also sew them because the iron. Yeah, I would not enough. iron. We I've done iron on before. Um, it, it, I didn't even know come off after a couple a of months. Yeah. No. yeah and stuff. honestly, I unless you or someone you live with is really good at sewing, I'd probably just take them to a tailor. Which again, I apologize for. My mom had planned on doing it. <laughs> I tried. It's good. like I said, um, it might be work out better this way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Bubble. I Boy. like it, but Merry thanks Christmas. so much. Merry Christmas, dude. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We'll pull up your boxes next. next. One. I'm shaking it. It sounds like money. So there, it's there's a lot of things in there. Okay. There's one like main gift, but there's a couple of other things in there for you guys as well. So. They're not vans. I was gonna that's, say that's that's on the docket for the like, Jose, How did you, you almost got my shoe size correct? <laughs> what? Yeah, they're on. That's on the docket for one day, but I didn't have enough time to pull that one off. So oh the, my so god! Holy buckets! The box I just used for the for the size. You'll see why. Okay. Okay. Yeah, twelve. Little little smaller than I usually get for <laughs> shoes, but. Rock 13. So the record. XRT oh, yeah. with the nerds. <laughs> kind of applicable Jason. you know for the future jose you know mm -hmm, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah no i'm I'd, i still have all the files so that's not an easy that's not a hard oh, thing to fix yeah. for sure very nice and then the, gotta get one i'll give mm -hmm. one of these to pony immediately oh yeah yeah i'm so oh, pumped yeah. for that one too that was so psyched to have that one too the xrt yes. oh wait, wait i should one. describe it yeah jason oh speaking you're the kidding oatmeal me. cream pie oh, oh my, my gosh God. jose go to oh, yes. see i knew he was the one sending me this the treats yes. we got the like I, Did I you was not to the bottom of them straight not, from Amazon. 
I was not ordered to send oh, you the treats, but these gushers. But yeah, I sent them gushers, Scooby snacks, Christmas cakes, and oatmeal cream pies oh, yeah. because I just I'm gonna eat I was these like, tonight. Man, Nerd some fest gaming tonight. Treats. That's exactly what these are, and then that's the real gift that Chance has right there. Oh, flippy flops. <laughs> Very. Put these on right now. Oh, which are probably applicable because of the negative oh, yeah, temperatures. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. I need to flip these on right, right now, boys. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Jose. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I didn't even notice the gushers down there. Is that what these are? Yep. Gushers? I've never had a gusher in a while. In a You've place. never had a gusher? Oh, in a while. I, I couldn't remember the last time. I mean, hopefully, this we had like healthy out of gushers. My teeth house. Right now. Thank you, Jose. Ago. Thank you, guys. Were, Merry Christmas. Okay. Might get, yeah, Merry Christmas. Okay, so here's guys. the thing I was going to get you guys. I was going to get Bubble Boy the Dark Souls card game, but it wasn't <gasps> going to get here on time. So, and then I was, but then I read reviews and it's like, you got to have a good co op session. I'm like, is Ashley really going to play it with no. him? God, so no. I was like, eh, I'll wait on it. And Cora will. Jose, try. I got him, you know, Stick of Truth early a little bit, but then he bought the second one, of course, before I could, you know, so I'm, I'm still working on it. Still working on it. Hey, you got a week. You're good. Yeah, no rush, man. Oh, you're you're muted. Oh no, I was I was just chewing these gushers. Guys, he's, what? He's, Let's he's close the show. You were joking. Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy everything. Yeah, yeah. be safe. So Enjoy many your time with family. To eat this week. Can't wait. I'm already digging in, if you couldn't tell, having some gushers. Let's close the show like we always do. With the best food we had this week. Guys, oh, I can soft. I can go first for a date night. Because Allie's parents were have been here, as you, I mentioned. I think I mentioned this last week or sometime. We got to go out to dinner, and our semi annual trip, and we do this every Del time. Frisco's. We went to Del Frisco's. You dog, you guys, it's so good. Every time I go, I'm blown away. But I don't need to gush over it. I get the same thing: steak, the crab cake on top, and multiple rounds of oh. the cheese steak egg rolls. It's unbeatable. Okay, multiple rounds of an appetizer. Yes. Sixteen dollar appetizer, by the way. How do you live in longer? Um, yeah, we yellowed it up. Allie also, I have to shout out Allie. Congratulations! They got this huge contract bid for her wastewater engineering company with the city of Durango. So we kind of oh, celebrated. Cool. That's right. So, Wait, you're not moving, are you? No, no. It's just no. It's just they. They. It's there. Some of them the are contract. based on it. Yeah, exactly. So it is a big Remote. deal. In addition to that, we celebrated and got sushi the other night, guys. And Orion oh. Sushi over on Lake on uh, Kipling, Kipling right? It's and dope, dude. Jewel. I got. It. I have the order up right now, you guys. I always mention it, but I never tell you. Here's what you need to get. It's called the one of the special roll that I get is called the volcano roll. Oh no, sorry. First one, spicy grill roll. I think it's supposed to be spicy girl roll. It's just a typo on here. Spicy tuna salmon cucumber inside topped with spicy crab jalapeno and chili sauce that's the first one you get yeah, you get that you get sounds legit you get two of those i don't even like sushi you get two of those and then you get the volcano roll and this one is avocado jalapeno deep fried with chunks of spicy scallops you guys that one with the scallops so good jose spicy girl volcano get one of each the next time you're in the area because it's right up the road from you so that it is it's really good we've been there too living like a king this week and right now actually the best treats i've had right here i'm not even oh, kidding no, i'm cookies. eating the uh, cream, cream pies, pies and the uh christmas trees from jose absolutely yeah. thank you which by the way since they'll never listen jose if ashley asks you just got me the slippers yeah, exactly. Copy. I was going to share this with no Ellie. Oh, snacks. Chance. You're absolutely right. I'm, t- I'm, so I'm putting these in that fridge was, back there. I was going to get you guys a, little, a container with like your name on it for snacks, but I was like, oh, but we all have kids. Like That's going to get stolen right away. Uh, so that's why I just sent the snacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll go uh, since I'm unmuted. So my best food of the week, I got to have a wonderful lunch with all the ladies from work. We got to leave early on Friday and start break, which was amazing. Um, and I, I considered skipping it, but I'm so glad I didn't because we chose to go to Chiba Hut. Have the two of you been to Chiba Hut? No, you've oh, my God. Yeah, I have years oh, and years. man, is it delicious. And it's expensive. It was $20 um for a sub sandwich and that's why twenty dollars for dark souls remastered i'm just saying i know 
Um, if you remember back to our best sam- sub sandwich uh, episode, Chiba Hut did not count in that because it's not fast food, I guess, really. Um, but it was amazing. And if you don't know everything, wait, wait, wait. Is, why like, is it not fast food? Um, they bring it to the table, no like drive you have to order, and they yeah, and there's no drive through, and it's expensive as hell. Like I ain't never spent twenty dollars at a Subway. Are you kidding me? Um, but I got, I get the THC typically, which is Turkey hummus and cheddar. And it's, it's just phenomenal. I, th- it was really sad this time. And I'm going to say really sad in air quotes. They did not have the patented, um, fruity pebbles, rice crispy treat. I was, it was just, I was like, why are we even here then? Um, but they did have a crunch berry one, which was serviceable. It was by no means bad. It was still good. And of course I got the blueberry lemonade Kool-Aid, um, to round it off. So that, that place is always good. That sounds delightful, man. That's good. Oh, it's so good. And Daniel, it's not terribly far from central. Yeah. But $20. I know. Well, because I got the extra, the, yeah, you went all out. I didn't get anything extra. I know. If I I I leave, you know, that fruity pebbles things there. I'm going straight to Colfax to that Popeye's. That's where I'm going. Jose, what about you? Uh, speaking of that for my food, Popeye's. On, uh, on Monday this week, we went to school Monday and Tuesday this week. And uh, on Monday, my friend Zach Morris, my coworker, was like, hey, you want to go to Popeye's? And I was like, you literally never have to ask me. If I'm not around and you think you're going, just get me one and I will absolutely eat it. Um, so got my classic spicy sandwich. It was delightful. It was a great way to kind of round out the year um, in the school semester, I should say. So that was the first thing I had that was delightful. The other thing um, yesterday, so my um, – my girls were supposed to be in school today and yesterday because their school district went like absurdly long this year. And I didn't have school yesterday, neither did Victoria because she finished when you guys did last Friday. Um, and so we had a day to kind of wrap up some stuff that we needed to take care of. Wait, both wait, literally they, and they still figuratively. went to school today, Jose? It was, no, no, no. I was going to say. The school got yeah. canceled, obviously, because of the cold. Because I and for those that are listening, if you're not in Colorado, like I know it sounds like we're just complaining, but we've all lived in Colorado our whole life. Like, no, it is absurdly cold outside. Last night in parts of Denver, it was getting to negative 22 in Denver, which like never happens. There's parts in like the Eastern Plains where it was getting to like negative 40, negative 50 wind chills and stuff like that. So it's very, very cold because of that. They canceled school and it's not because of the snow. That's a common misconception people have in Colorado. It's actually because of the cold itself, because like little kids waiting for buses could get seriously hurt. And so that's why they canceled school. And they were they were smart about it. Like they were clearly writing was on the wall. They were sending him home like we're monitoring and it could happen. And I was like, it's going to get canceled. But nonetheless, um, the day before yesterday when things were still okay outside we actually ran a couple errands got some stuff done you know obviously with holidays approaching there's just a lot to do and we stopped by the taste of philly again and i know you haven't been there dan you need to go is it in, the, I had is that. in southwest plaza I've, i was no, there this it's, week it's like right there though it's not in southwest plaza oh. it's on the south side of bulls go. next to where that uh i think it's a choose fitnesses and there's like a game store I get? and stuff like that Get the green chili Philly. Oh, that's what I get. The green chili Philly. By the way, forgot to tell you. Also, her, her parents took us out to dinner. We went to Perry's. We went to the one. Ooh. Oh, the new. I got the I new. Ju- yes, I got the new Mexican. Loved it. Allie loved it as well. Highly recommend. So good. But I think you mentioned this as well. Terrible service. Just uh, it's hit or miss. I would <laughs> for me, it's been hit or miss. Okay, delicious. Which what Perry? Did you go to the one at River Point? Oh, South South. What's the one? Glenn? Yeah, something with Rapaho and Oh no. Yeah, no. We we go to the one that's at River Point, like right that's there by the Costco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we got the green chili Philly. It was also delightful. Man, I just they they're good, legitimate real Philly cheesesteaks. So if you're ever there, check them out. Uh taste of Philly. So that's the best food I had this week, man. It's been a good week and looking forward to the holidays, of course. Awesome week of food, awesome week of gifts, awesome week of gaming, guys. This has been Xbox Record This episode 86. Uh, again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays to everyone. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Daddy D. Wally. You can follow me at Daddy D. Wally across all social media. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. And Chipotle Bear, where can people find you? Uh, you can for sure find me at Chipotle underscore on uh, Chipotle underscore bear on Twitter or Chipotle bear on Instagram. Always having fun chatting with all the gamer squad out there. There's a, it's a pretty good community of people that just comment on gaming and are honestly pretty good. Like I was a little worried that you just run into more and more people who are just pretty negative. And it's not the case, man. You know, like Ains said, we just need more of that in our lives. So it's been great. So if you're interested, always feel free to reach out. And bubble boy and seven, where can people find you? 
Uh, the razor blade section of any of your local grocery stores, because I have to keep shaving this. It itches so Ooh, much. It's the Dollar worst. Club. As always, oatmeal raisin cookie lovers, see you online. See you online. See you online. See you online. Why are you smiling like that? I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Make work your favorite. That's your favorite, okay? Okay. Work is your new favorite. Fine. It's time for the announcement. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. Xbox, record this. as a podcast created by Daniel Walensic. You can follow him at Daddy Diwali on all social media. The assistant to the co-host is Jose Martinez, and you can follow him at Chipotle underscore bear on Twitter. The assistant to the assistant to the co-host is Chance Siegel, and you can follow him at BubbleBoy N7. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. If you'd like to find out more about the show, visit XboxRecordThis.com.